Hey there, I woke up this morning and it was snowing outside, which isn't that common here in Georgia, especially in this area, it has kind of a rainforest vibe. And it just kept snowing all day and it finally accumulated up to like three or four inches, which to me is not a big deal because I'm from Chicago, but here it's a huge deal because people can't get around the city just simply cannot operate when it's when it has that much snow, especially with all the hills and all that stuff, you just can't really get around. I myself was like, well, I have an SUV. I know how to drive in the snow. I'm just gonna go run my errands like I was planning on doing anyway. But my car battery had different ideas. The point of me telling you this is because I'm snowed in, which makes tonight the perfect night to start a video on the Axolotl, which is long overdue. It is one of my favorite pieces of gear, despite it costing like 65 euros or 75 bucks or, 0.000001 bitcoins, or if you're watching this next week, uh, probably a 2,000 bitcoins. It's very cheap and it is very capable. And if you are into synthesizers or effects pedals or any of that stuff in any way, this is a must have. So let's have a close look at the Axolotl development board and make a drum machine. The Axolotl is just the development board that you see inside this case. And it's a fully assembled development board. It has all the inputs and outputs and everything. It just doesn't come with a case. So if you want a case, you're going to have to get creative and make one. But that's kind of the idea is because it also has GPIOs. And so you might want to put your own knobs on top or, you know, something like that. If you don't plan on building out the hardware and you don't feel like being creative with case prototyping, I do have these clear ones for sale on alphabasic.com. Um, there's like 30 left or something like that. I just had a bunch made for me and my friends and put the rest up there. It's a good solid case, comes with instructions on how to use it, but this is by no means a plug for that. It's just, if you need a case, I got some extra. So what you're getting with the Axolotl is a stereo input, a stereo output. Both of those are a quarter inch. You're getting an eighth inch headphone out. You're getting a micro USB port, which can be used to either power the device or hook it up to the computer. You're getting a micro SD card slot for holding samples or patches or anything like that. You are getting a USB host slot. So you could actually plug a USB MIDI controller into this thing. Uh, and a variety of other things. I'm sure there's many other uses that I'm not thinking of right now. And then you have your standard hardware DIN MIDI in and out. And then you even have a little plug for, I think it's five volts. What is it, five volts? I don't know how many volts this uses. I guess I'm just gonna have to put the text up there somewhere. Patches for the Axolotl can be anything from a loop pedal to an effects unit, to a synthesizer, to a poly synthesizer, to a drum machine, to... Uh, I use it all the time as a little MIDI Swiss Army knife to sort of uh, translate MIDI signals between one MIDI device and another. Works absolutely perfectly for that. Everything you make for this is made in the Axolotl Patcher, which looks a bit like Reactor or PD or something like that. It's a node-based programming language, which isn't really like a programming language. You can also use the Patcher as almost like kind of a synthesizer or a DAW that you're controlling on your computer screen while all the audio is being run on the Axolotl, which is kind of bananas. And I haven't really done it that much because it doesn't seem as responsive as I would like, but that is not the intended purpose. It just seems a lot of people use it that way. They make like little 303s and stuff because they just don't feel like hooking up a MIDI controller. But enough about the circuit board. Let's go into the patcher and make a drum machine. And I'm not talking about a little sample player. I'm talking about an actual drum machine where you can modify the sounds in real time with a MIDI controller. Warning. The sound in the remaining portion of this video is not balanced in a way that reflects this channel's standards. This is due to Art Uria's horrible ground loop isolation in the BeatStep Pro. This is also due to me underestimating aforementioned ground loop and being lazy about not mixing multiple tracks. But not as lazy as Art Uria was about insulating circuits. Wait, before you type that comment. I know about the Y adapter. The Y adapter doesn't help when using the BeatStep Pro connected to an Axolotl connected to the USB port of the PC. Enjoy the ground loop. Alright, so this is the Axolotl software. And uh, you could like update your firmware and all that stuff from here. But I'm going to go to a new patch, create that new patch, maximize it. And this is pretty much a lot like Max or Reactor or PD in the fact that it's node-based programming essentially and you one thing i really like about this is you could double click anywhere and you get this window that opens up and then you could just type what you want like uh let's say i want a saw um let's say i want a uh, lfo let's say i want a sign let's say i want a gate um that makes things a lot quicker but we're making a drum machine so 
I gotta think for a second. What do I want to do? How do you make a drum machine? Uh, I don't think I've ever made a drum machine. I've made a sampler for my Eurorack, but I've never made a drum machine. All right, so how about if we go with six channels, just to keep it simple. And uh, uh, by the way, I'm using a BeatStep Pro here. And uh, that's why you hear that annoying noise, because uh, Arturia doesn't seem to have a handle on how to insulate things. Um, and what else should I say? Oh yeah, so the BeatStep Pro is going directly into the Axolotl. Any audio you hear is not coming from my PC. It is coming from the Axolotl, which is going into the input of my sound card. So just so you know, it's acting as a standalone unit that I'm programming via USB. And then this is going into the USB host of the Axolotl. So the Axolotl is sort of acting as its own desktop computer. Okay? Okay. All right, so uh, let's create six MIDI channels that come in. So I'm going to go uh, let's see. I, I no, this won't make it monophonic. Even though I do like monophonic drum machines, I I, I like freak out if I can't uh, if I can't make a drum machine monophonic. Until I get flashball beats. Um, all right, note. That should work. Okay, so this is an individual note. And let's say I want this note to be 24 from the Beat Step Pro. And now I'm just going to copy this five more times. This is going to get really messy really fast, so we're going to have to keep it ultra tidy. Because I have a feeling this patch is going to be huge. And I do, in this, t this, this might take a while, this tutorial. I'm not going to be editing it around. I'm not going to be editing it a lot. Um, I would have edited that out normally. I, I want it to sort of go through the entire process. So stick with me. Um, let's see, what else should I have here? Uh, okay, so those are our inputs, and that's coming from, oh yeah, so this should be 25, note number 26, note number 27, note number 28, and note number 29. So that will be C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F on my BeatStep Pro, which I will be able to sequence, uh, hopefully, so. All right, uh, so... Let's say this first one, let's give it, let's make this a kick. So just a standard ADSR, that will control the pitch of the kick. Um, I guess a kick should be a sign, eh? Um, that looks good. Oh, you know what? I want to make an attenuator. And that'll do it. This will attenuate the pitch so it's not going from like the max all the way down. Uh, well, let's see, let's do another ADSR for the actual tone. Let's do uh, VCA. And uh, let's do a mix bus. Can we get a mix? There's six. Might be cool. Um, great. Okay. And so S rate, that's uh, audio. K rate is sort of like what you would send pitch through. You'll, and so S rate is red. K rate is blue. I'm sure you'll get the hang of this because I trust you. Um, and then the rest of that, then I guess, uh, I don't know, should everything go through a filter? I guess everything should go through a filter eventually. Um, how do I want to set this up? Out. Stereo out. Okay, and, uh, alright, so let's just pop this into the stereo out. Let's connect the gate to this ADSR, to this ADSR. 
Um, <clears throat> I I have a f I'm going to change some things around in a bit, but we'll we'll just I'm just sort of like seeing if this will initially work. All right, I don't seem to be forgetting anything. And we're in code. Okay, so now it's live. Let's go back down to. <laughs> All right, so there is our kick drum, which. Great. So that's good kick. I am going to save and uh, okay. Uh, now let's make, I don't know, a snare. So I'm going to copy this. Um, Let's use a pink noise, maybe. Uh, we'll want S rate and another VCA. And then that could go directly into number two. And then the gate will go into the gate. All right, let's try that. Pretty shitty, shitty snare. Um, all right, so we have we have Polly. Um, maybe move these down a little bit so we could stay organized. Uh, next, I don't know what I want next. Uh, let's just play around with some noises here. Uh, hmm. Maybe next we will go... I'm actually in the other window. I'm looking at a list of objects just to make this a little bit faster than exploring around. Just because it's, it's, it's been a minute. All right. Uh, I'll go sign another ADSR. Ooh, how about a square... And a sign. Ooh, yeah, we could get some FM going. Let's get some FM going. My mouse is, uh, I have this, like, Razer awesome super gaming mouse, and it sucks. It's killing me. All right, so we have a lot of signs to choose from. <laughs> I don't know uh, which would be best. Uh, I don't want an LFO, that's for sure. Uh, looking at that list again. I should probably just, if I had enough room in this window, I'd just bring it there. All right, let's just use a normal sign. Um, let's modulate that with a square. Um, so, okay, so as you notice, it says mutable instrument braids, right? It's actually using the firmware from uh, the actual Eurorack module braids, uh, and there's a lot of stuff that they you could actually run clouds on Axolotl, and it's quite intuitive. It actually the reverb's not nearly as good as the clouds unit, but you don't get clouds for reverb; you get it for the textural sampling, and that's uh, that's what it does. And I think it it kind of sounds like smoother than 
the module, which, you know, makes me feel like a chump for paying so much for the module. Uh, maybe another ADSR that works with the VCA. I should really just be copying and pasting. I, like, don't want to, like, move my arm out or something. I'm just too lazy to move my arm out, so. All right. That's a sign of somebody who works on hardware synths too much when you're, like, too lazy to type something in the keyboard. I don't... But then again, I guess with hardware synths, you're constantly doing movement stuff. All right. What a dumb thing to complain about, eh? All right, so this ADSR will affect... Let's see, we want the sign to come out here. Uh... First, all right, so this ADSR will mess with the pitch of what will be the LFO modulator for the sine wave. And this has never crashed on me, by the way. I just save everything, like, constantly. So just don't, don't think that I'm doing it because I'm used to crashes. It's going to crash now that I said that. But All right, so... <laughs> That's so gross. <laughs> Imagine if my dog just like walked in the room and was like, <laughs> All right, let's just make this like a chirp. So when I move the sine wave, it almost sounds like a filter. Alright, we just need this to be like a tiny sound. There we go. Alright. Alright, so now we got... This one's still too loud, or maybe this one's too soft. There we go. I like how I could hold these. Kind of wish every drum machine did that. All right, we're good so far. So that is three of six. Hmm. All right, let me look through my options here I say number four let's do some let's do like some way crazier FM thing with number four god that ground loop noise from this Arturia is just killing me guys get your shit together By the way, the BeatStep Pro, aside from that ground loop thing in there, their solution to that is, like, if you're using it as not a USB host, they give you this uh, this little ghetto cable because they're like, well, we wired this thing wrong, but instead of, like, fixing it, let's just give everybody a little uh, ground a cable that gets rid of the ground sound, which is just, I don't know. Come on, guys. All right. Uh, let's see what we got. We got sync, square... Super Square. Uh, let's see what else Braids has. Can I search Braids? Yeah, nice. Question mark. Oh yeah, that question mark oscillator. I love that. At least in the module I do. Um, we always need a VCA. Man, they have like eight time eight eight VCA patches. That would have been that would have been handier if I saw that earlier I, I, the thing is is every time you use this you see like these new patches that you're just like oh yeah because well. yeah th there's a large community one thing to note about the Axolotl community 
is that it's really, really helpful. And there's people who have made like hundreds and hundreds of these modules because these are, uh, what are they? Let's look. These look, yeah, I think these are C++. So yeah, people just sort of make their own, make their own module and go to town with it. And that's pretty rad. Um, so you end up, that's how like the clouds thing came to this. All right, let's try our. No, sir, that's not working. Should be this one. What did I do wrong? Oh, we need to strike it. Okay. Oh, also, it, it would be probably, probably good if the ADSR actually controlled the VCA. Okay, so I want to modulate the timbre of this, which we can just do with like, do they have a random LFO? That would be awesome. Search random. Mm, I'm sure they have some sort of random out. This might be it actually. Random drift. So much stuff. Can you imagine if, like, Reactor had a, uh, if Reactor just worked f with the community library, the Native Instruments li uh, user library, and just had everything, like, right at your face? The problem with that is that if you have a sh crappy internet connection, I actually don't know. Um, I have fiber here. Hope I have it at the next place I live. Um, but yeah, I have fiber here. And so, you know, if it works with the internet, it works great essentially. But that being said, I don't know what this would be like if you were like on DSL or something. Here's a random LFO. Oh God, this one's way too big. I don't need all this too much. <laughs> I don't know what any of these do. Let's just play around with them and, and see. Oh, uh, Sure. That could be, yeah, the pitch could come from velocity. Great idea. The seed could come from my release vo velocity. This is starting to get like really complicated, which is awesome. And run. So now we got Let's move on. Let's move on to number five. God, this alpha is so big. It's subtle. Or it might not even be working. It might just be so subtle that my ears are that I'm just hearing hearing what I want to hear. Uh what do you think? What would be a good idea? Let's just browse their oscillators on here. Show you what my experience is like. Also, you could download this for free if you just want to check it out before uh, committing to spending 65 euros for a development kit like this to make your own synth that can do whatever you want, really. My slight there is that you should buy this right now oh god this is the bodes or the the bodes the bow from uh braids oh god a saw swarm oscillator man they got all the braid stuff i will really like braids <laughs> they have a kick they have braids kick of course they do plucked oh do they have the snare oh look at that they got the snare how lucky am i i don't even we might not even need a vca for this this might be able to go directly into the amp 
and uh, come directly. The strike can just come right from here. And let's give that a try. That'd be handy. So, so, so. Yeah, there we go. We got a snare now. So, again, under, uh, what we're playing with here is there's a module from Mutable called Braids, and it's kind of a uh, one and all, like everything can, it, it does a lot. It has like a lot of different oscillators, it has its own VCA, it has its own uh, uh, ADSR, and it's just kind of one of those, like, I really need a kick drum now and I don't have 50 modules to make one, so you could just sort of use the braids one. And so the stuff's not great, but that's what it is. Uh, but it's all, if it's here, that tells me that there isn't much sample, there's no sample memory on it aside from waveforms, because we get, so. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, we need one more sound, and that other sound should definitely be some sort of hi-hat situation. And so this video doesn't take six weeks to make. Oh God, they have the braids uh, vowel stuff. Man, I love playing with that stuff in my modular. I did, I, I like forgot that there was so much, so much stuff from braids. Harmonics, that'll work. Except except we're going to have to create a VCA and an ADSR. Okay, and VCA. There's like giant things of ice just hitting my skylights. And one of them, how amazing, with, oh man, it's not a stream, so I would be dead, but um, <laughs> I, I wouldn't be able to post it, but imagine if just a giant, thing of ice just landed on me after I spent my entire life growing up in Chicago and then I moved to Georgia only to get crushed by ice while playing with Axolotl. All right, and gate here. We should do something interesting with the pitch for this one, maybe some FM or something, but let's see how it sounds first. And every time I click live, I'm compiling. Ooh, this coupled with some noise could be cool. Oh, maybe not. Maybe we don't even need to do that. God, they really, they really have the physical modeling down. We're going to need to add some FM to this, I've decided. Oh, not that kind of FM. I'm going to need a sign with a K rate output. Let's see if I can find that here. Um. There we go. And we could have the velocity. Control the pitch of the sign. Nice. Okay, I don't need to talk anymore, and I'm, I, I'm, I know that this is vibrating the hell out of this, so I'm probably going to remove the low end of this entire part, but okay. Oh, no, I can't because I'm recording with... Ah, damn it. All right, I'm going to shut my mouth. And I'm going to create a beat.
Okay, so now we have a beat. One thing I absolutely love about the uh, Beat Step Pro is that you can randomize stuff. I mean, I, I'm just going to randomize everything, but like even with melody, if you could, you could get really deep. I should do a video on that. Okay, so also another thing we can do here is we can, in pretty much any knob you see here, we could have MIDI CC control it. And we could even control it with like the velocity of the Beat Step Pro if we wanted to. Um, we could even have it randomized by the Beat Step Pro or we could have it randomized on here automatically. Uh, but just for the sake of not making this video two hours long, I'm just going to edit it on the screen. But no once again that this entire thing is running off of the axolotl and not the computer i could save it to the sd card and as soon as axolotl turns on it will be a drum machine from this point forward i'm going to add some uh i'm going to try and add some effects because we're really not even coming close to using this thing's entire processing power so try reverb let's see what reverb since they seem to be adding things faster than i can look a stomp box reverb Man, I really should try and make an algorithm for this. That would be really cool. I, I haven't heard any good reverb on here yet. But how cool would it be to just have some, like, beautiful reverb functionality? Oh, this is from Elements. Whoa. Man, I'm going to have to go deeper with this. I had no idea that they had the Elements firmware in here, too. Elements is another mutable module that is a, it's like physical modeling, and it is absolutely beautiful. It's one of my favorite modules. All right. Back to the grind. So there you have it. We've made a drum machine with the Axolotl. And again, uh, everything that you hear is stored here. And it's not even coming close to using all the DSP load of the processor. And uh, you can use this anywhere. You could MIDI in, MIDI out. Uh, I've managed to get CV in and CV out of it. Uh, and you have GPIO ports. Uh, a lot of them. Um, how many does it have? Da, 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 da. A lot has a lot of GPI ports. I mean, you could put your own potentiometers on here. You don't even have to have a MIDI controller. You could put your own pads on here. You could you could literally create a synth from the ground up, or you could just be touch and go. And you know, like I I got it. I made a case for this, and I bring it on the road with me. And I play. I've made a lot of patches on the road. And maybe yeah, maybe I should just like go over those on some other video. But anyway, that's the Axolotl, and that's why you need one. And if you have a friend who's into synths, a boyfriend or a girlfriend who's into synths, this is the Christmas gift to get them. It's only 65 euros. I have no affiliation whatsoever with the people who made this. I just heard about it and pre-ordered it and loved it to death. And I should probably have another one. <laughs> I should 
probably have two, considering how often I use them as midi Swiss Army knives. But anyway, thanks for watching. I hope this was somewhat entertaining. Uh, I, I kind of hate doing these videos where I'm in a little portion of the screen down here and work. I don't know. For some reason, I just I don't see how they're entertaining. But they apparently most of my views come from videos where I'm a tiny little dude working on a screen rather than a something that's more lushly produced of me working on a synth. So regardless, uh, thanks for watching and buy yourself or your loved one an axolotl because this thing is amazing. It blows the Nord modular out of the water at what, God, 5% the price. Whew. And hey, as always, if you like what you saw here, subscribe to the channel and let me know in the comments if there's anything you want me to cover in the future. Bye.